I was rather apprehensive, as everyone is when they go into their first real coaching role. A highly successful club, I had to tread very, very carefully, following in the footsteps of an absolute legend. Max was the best. He was a, bit of a pretty original thinker, Max. He was a good speaker, always had ideas. Max was just so calm, cool and collected. Maybe I was a bit young, I used to, I used to fall for it every time. He always had somebody in hospital dying with their, and sending their membership ticket and uh, there was always a story and I loved it. First thing I wanted them to enjoy it, that, you know, that was the important thing. Secondly, there were rules that had to be abided by, there were team plans, there were all those things that, that, that I hadn't played under previously but I felt they had to be there. I used to love doing the drop kick and I wasn't bad at it I suppose but I remember in a practice match uh, Max I drop kick no more. Man drop kicks and torpedo punts there's only one kick we were allowed to do mainly because we were incompetent all the others according to Max so he might have been right too. He got respect from the guys especially younger guys because I was only 22. He was more on the tactical side of things even back then you know he was quite aware of you know the less number of players on the field no wingman. It was just follow Max and uh, no, no wingers then, 16 man aside, so I start on the halfback flank. It suited my style of play to run and, uh, and that's how we worked it out. The place was reeking with culture, just magnificent. Brian Harvey and I were the two halfback flankers and we would just kick the ball to the, the top side wing and run. You'd kick it out to Bobby Percy, he'd really get beaten. He'd just take off down Morris Street, kick it to Les Stillman. Les would just go across from the centre, there was no wings, and kick it down the forward line. And good luck, fellas, try and kick a goal. Football was always, you never kicked the ball sideways, you never kicked the ball backwards. But Max changed one part of that because he had his half-back flankers. If the ball was on one side, he had his other half-back flanker taking off, and we get the ball, it had to be kicked sideways across to that player running onto it. So I come out from full back and kick out a drop kick. Well, he walked up and he got within 20 metres and said, Wit, no more drop kicks. He was ahead of his time as a coach, I thought. And that's similar to the way the game is played these days. And, and in those days, that was unheard of. And, and we got away with quite a bit for a while before some teams started to wake up to that. He was very quick with his moves. You know, he'd make them during the quarter. Wouldn't wait until the interval. So the next time it happened, Again, a point, and unwillingly, I don't know why, but I kicked a drop kick. Well, this time, it was within, I suppose, a foot of my face. <laughs> Wit, I've told you. Sorry, Max. I never did it again. Never kicked drop kicks again. Yeah, I don't regret uh, playing down here, and uh, as I say, Max Papley was my, one of my heroes, and still is, and he was a bit of a mentor then. He was good, and a very good player, like, quick to spot you somewhere, and you know. He didn't have to wave and put a light flashing on your head. He'd see you and he'd bring you into the game. I remember Dallas Patterson was at full forward and um, Dallas said to me a couple of times, what's the point? Papley gets the ball out of the centre, runs 10 metres with it and then it's a drop kick and it's a goal. He said, what's the point? That club is all about the people, the administrators, the volunteers. I'd never experienced anything quite like it. Moorabbin were very similar, but Willie were different. And to be able to do what we did for those people built up our players into something special. And they gave something special.